Okay, at first, let me warmly welcome you. Um, it's great to, to have so many people here, here again and um, to discuss with you, well, what we are, and uh, we are NFDI for Microdata, what we, we in, intend to do. We use this mostly as a way to communicate our ideas and current plan to you, but more importantly also for you, give us more feedback, what is missing, where you might see gaps and um, what we should improve. A little bit of background, the proposal has to be handed in end of September. So we have a little bit more than a month ahead of us and it will be definitely stressful and, and intensive, um, but we still have ways or still have the option to, to adapt things. And this is why we think having your feedback right now is, is very useful for us. And we thank all of you for, for being here and hopefully sharing then later your impressions in latest practice. Uh, we will start with a small uh, slideshow that I've prepared and um, I will share my screen now. Uh, a warm welcome here to the NFDI for Microbiota workshop. Uh, we would like today, um, and this is our fourth one, so this time we would like to show you actually our work program. We had uh, several um, of those meetings before and last time there was clearly the wish we should go a little bit more into detail and describe what we want to do. And this is exactly what we will do today. At first, when we talk about community, so what is actually our community? Because microbiota seems sometimes not to be, um, or is a rather broad term. And just to specify who we are addressing with, the, uh, with this endeavor, we are basically talking to a, a broad range of people, a broad range of researchers. So basically people from bacteriology, but also virology, mycology, protistology and also parasitology. And uh, I think we, we uh, can combine these different um, um, communities because they have certain things shared. And uh, also the, the member of NFDI for Microbiota have backgrounds in all these fields. So we hope to um, yeah, help all these communities that we put now together into this larger community of microbiology. The plan for, for today is the following. Um, as not everybody is precisely aware what is NFDI and how this is meant to be, I would give again a short introduction to this. I try to keep it short, but um, this is sometimes needed because NFDI in general is rather different. Then I will dive a little bit into NFDI for Microbiota and our ideas. And then we will have a, a yeah, more detailed discussion of the work program. We will guide you through the different points and uh, you can already there ask us, but otherwise we have uh, as a fourth point, we have a feedback um, planned where you ideally can tell us what was good, what is maybe missing. And we have uh, this in, in uh, different forms. We, for the ones who can unfortunately stay only shortly, we, we have a short poll, we have a pad where we can communicate. And we also have short breakout rooms or small breakout rooms where you can discuss in, in a smaller round what you um, see as a, as a good thing and maybe where you see some improvements. All right, um, at first a little bit about uh, the NFDI itself, and there we have to go a little, little bit further back even. Uh, the Council for Scientific in, um, Information Infrastructure, Rat für Informationsinfrastruktur, was implemented in 2014 by the Joint Science Conference. And the, the aim is to give recommendations on a systematic level, no implementations or on an operational level, but really the high level recommendations where um, yeah, what the scientific community should do and how this can be um, guided or, or uh, controlled by a, on, a, on a political level. The recommendations that they came up with was to build a national research data infrastructure, NFDI, Nationale Forschungsdateninfrastruktur, and by this, well, laying the foundation for a, a, new, a new level of science, ideally. So it should be an, a, a German-wide network of uh, competences that are importantly, this, and this is key, driven by the scientific communities. So it's not that infrastructure should be set up and then people might come, but it should be clear from the beginning on that this is driven by the scientific community. And also, they mentioned that it's important for this to change the type of funding that we have 
sustainable structures here, yeah, not in a project base as, as we know this usually, but uh, have long-term um, possibilities to maintain infrastructure. And also the, um, the, yeah, the, the people should be changed or the different um, jobs required for this should be established. So data librarians, data scientists, data stewards, these kind of new job profiles uh, should be part of this change that basically help to improve the science, uh, scientific or the research process. And this also means investment in mines. So it's less about building new infrastructure, but connecting available ones and to rather uh, put the money into the, into the development of new stuff and different operations of research data management and services. In the end, what is expected to happen or what is wished to happen is a fundamental change of the scientific culture to a interconnected and open um, yeah, culture that exists in parts already, but that is not there where it could be so far. And it is pretty clear that uh, such a transition takes long and the estimate is 15 to 20 years. So we see that the NFDI itself is a rather different beast than let's say a normal um, project to run, but it's actually a fundamental change inside of the research community and uh, that will take quite a while. The um, Joint Science Conference decided to fund that uh, research data infrastructure and um, with roughly 90 million euros per year until 2028. Um, and 9% yeah, is coming from the federal German government and 10% from the states. And uh, I will tell this later on, uh, this already or has already started. The um, tasks to, or the, the gaps to fill and the tasks to do are uh, the following, this is at least what was uh, suggested, define common standards, which is often lacking and due to this uh, exchange of data, for example, is much harder. Development of new methods to evaluate data, enable subsequent use of data, so better sharing and uh, reuse basically, and identify demands for research data management to, to improve them later on, but also general community building in order to share best practices and also to form a governance structure. So this should happen inside of these different consortia. So the NFDI should be built by different consortia, but in the end, it should be one single um, one single NFDI, if you see like this. So uh, interaction is very important here as well. Conrad, can we yes, ask questions or are questions uh, yes, later? Yes, please. Yeah, no, you can do this already now if you like. Okay, this is Volker. Uh, thanks for, for letting me ask. I hope you guys are not distracted by the plane. So I'm wondering about defined common standards, the first point on your current slide, yeah. because it seems to me like there is already an abundance of standards out there and it's really the actually proper use of the proper standards that's lacking and it's, yeah. it's tools for standards. Yeah that help us do the things that we know all know we ought to do, which is not doing for several various reasons, actually. So, so can you comment on that? Yeah, sure. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. And uh, inventing a, a new standard doesn't, doesn't help anyone. So th there are definitely gaps where these standards are missing, but under this umbrella, I would also put what you basically said and the spread of the available standards. And maybe also one, one word in terms of standards, clearly there should be not a German standard or it doesn't make sense to have national standards, but that it's very important that this is basically done on an, on the inter, uh, on an international level. And we will see this later, we have people inside of, of NFDI for Microdata that uh, are experienced working on, on uh, in these kind of committees. So we, we have clearly a need for developing new ones, but also the task is to bring this to the people. And this is also what uh, NFDI for Microdata and uh, general all uh, NFDI consortia are aiming to do. Basically looking around what is, what is there and how can we implement this in our infrastructure and how can we also teach this to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, was this? Thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. The selection and evaluation of the different consortia um, happened and will happen by the DFG. It's a strictly scientific driven process, but the final decision is then made by the Joint Science Conference and uh, clearly um, expert committees are, are formed that are basically looking at this and looking for the different aspects of this. And we have a look at these aspects in a, in a few slides. But first to mention the application or the funding happens in three rounds. So the first round 
was already last year, the, in, in, in autumn of last uh, year, the first uh, set of um, consortia handed in their proposals and they got meanwhile their response and, and started uh, basically or will start in, in, in autumn now. And uh, then there is the second round and we will apply for the second round basically this uh, th this autumn as mentioned, and then there will be a, th a third round in 21, so next year basically. The aim is that in, in the end there are around 30 consortia, roughly speaking, um, and currently it looks really like this number seems to be, or seems to be ra rather realistic. And it's about um, 70 million projects cost plus uh, funding and overhead and so on. So roughly this 85 to 90 million and basically between five and five, uh, two and five million uh, funding per consortium. I think roughly it's, it's three if you divide this properly. And um, that's roughly what, what is aimed for. So basically, let's say, speak, let's speak roughly of three million euros per year per, per consortium for around five years. Exactly. Yeah, the funding period um, is, is for five years. Clearly, the aim is to to extend this uh, later on, but uh, we will start basically with five years. And um, basically, there is a, a topical or methodological focus. There are a few cross-cutting consortia that are already formed. There's, and in principle, NFDI is also uh, the result of this. We started as NFDI for life that still exists as NFDI for life umbrella. Um, but those cross-cutting consortia were not allowed to apply so far. That might happen next year. But clearly, this is an important part, connecting the different communities later on. The criteria for the selection of these consortia are the readiness and relevance of, of the consortium and um, the research data management strategy and also the, the structure itself and viability. Yeah, with, with um, all this background, and we can actually even stop here if you have any questions already regarding NFDI and the formation of consortia. I wanted to keep this rather short, but still as this kind of uh, special, I, I wanted to give a very short background here seems to be not the case, so I will continue with um, NFDI from my quota in specific. I guess I don't have to tell this to people here in the call, but still I, I need to make the point here. Um, microbial species and, and viral particles are affecting us basically everywhere. They are influencing our health and I think the last month uh, of the corona pandemic um, made it pretty clear that we need to take care of this. We're still facing a lot of issues regarding antibiotic resistance and many other things. Basically, a lot of diseases are caused by this. Also, our gut microbiome and, and microbiome on, on other parts of our body are crucial for our survival and our health. So that's pretty clear. But what, what is often neglected is the strong impact actually on the whole ecosystem that basically the majority of the biomass out there are actually microbes and um, that all our food webs and our climate itself are influenced and are influencing microbiota. And due to this, we need a deep, deep and uh, broad understanding of these organisms. Since basically the, the beginning of humankind, we are also using microbes for food uh, production and in agriculture. So they are um, key components in, in, that, in this, and this is why we need to understand this. And meanwhile, also lots of chemicals and um, vaccines and so on are generated on a, in a biotechnological manner. Again, understanding um, microbes here is a key is a key to a, a successful um, uh, establishment of these kind of technologies. So I would say it's, it's undoubtable that uh, microbes are uh, of high relevance for human beings and the society in general. But as I said, I guess um, everybody knows this here. Still, um, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, scientific advances or the advance of science is always bound to technologies. And if you look at this image here, um, some might recognize this. This is the uh, one of the first microscopes developed. And that was a game changer because suddenly we could see these small uh, living beings there. And this basically changed how we could uh, perceive the world and could do science. 
Today we have again a change of tools and um, not, not sure if everybody is recognizing this, but th th this is basically a, a bunch of sequencing machines and, and, and VGI. So uh, today we have a lot of technologies, high throughput technologies that where we can basically with a push of a button generate uh, terabytes of data. And that is at first very good. Uh, this means we, we can uh, perform science in a much more efficient way than, than we uh, did this before uh, decades ago and we can basically generate a vast uh, set of data easily. Well, but the critical point is now translating this data into real insights. Uh, a terabyte of data doesn't help us because this is not, not a solution to the problems that we're facing. And this translation of data and insights is basically the scientific process. And we think we, we can do this better. So there are common, common challenges that researchers in microbiology are facing when they need to translate basically data into insights. And in general, on a very basic level is already the missing data management. Um, I'm a bioinformatician by myself, and I, you know, I, I had this rather often that people with a, with a hard drive came to me or told me, oh, can you please uh, uh, shortly download this from there? And then a few years later, they asked me, oh, do you have still the data? Because I've, I've lost it and I've no clue where it is right now, so maybe you have it somewhere. I usually have it somewhere because I have a certain data management. Um, but still, this is a, a fundamental skill that we need to give people and, and provide infrastructure to people too, and that is often missing, basically. Um, once you have your data somewhere in place and you want to start, then people often recognize afterwards, oh, okay, I did now, let's say, sequencing or the proteomics, but I have no way of translating this into things that I can handle. So a bioinformatic expertise is often required and missing. Once uh, you have a terabyte of data lying around, you, you might also recognize, well, this cannot be necessarily crunched on my little laptop here, but I need a little bit more computational infrastructure. I need a server and, and I need ways of, of storing things in there and I need to, um, uh, need to have software for doing all this. And th that can be also a hampering part. Sometimes we do not have to generate new data, but sometimes we, we just need to find data that is already generated for different purposes. And the problem is that there is a poor findability, and this is kind of connected to the, to the um, point below, lack of metadata. Because if there are, uh, are no metadata or metadata standards that need to, or this, that describe our data much better, then it's very hard to build tools for find this. And if we have a rich set and enforce this uh, rich set of metadata connected to our data, we can look for studies that did different things, uh, maybe from a different perspective, but that can be integrated into our study uh, that, that we want to run. And by this, in principle, making science much more efficient and much more um, cost effective. Um, and this is also then here limited access and reuse of data. Often um, high throughput analyses are done, for example, but the data is um, not necessarily available or again, the, the metadata is not given there. Luckily, we see at least the trend in there, but still not everybody knows how to make data accessible in a proper fashion. Um, and another thing is that Often, with a lot of manual curation, databases are generated, for example, in a, in a PhD project. And then, as soon as the PhD leaves the lab, this, these kind of databases are not maintained anymore. And we see this kind of data rot and basically loss of, of very valuable um, data and information out there. So these are a few common challenges that we see independent of the field in, in microbiology and that we would like to address and where we want to make science better and frictionless and, and seamless basically so that we have this uh, kind of uh, easy translation from insights into uh, from data into into insights. Conrad, this yes, is please. Walter again. Sorry, yes, please. Uh, you might, Absolutely. you might, yeah, you, you went Absolutely. back. Absolutely. Appreciate it. So, I mean, I read this slide and I have to apologize because I'm, I'm, I'm obviously new to this consortium and, and new to Germany again. So I, I'm wondering about reading this slide because all yeah. of this is my friend, uh, uh, friends at the EBI, yeah. uh, they would just say, okay, this is what we do. Yeah. Um, Period. But, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. You, you're absolutely right. And we'll see later. We are exactly talking with, <clears throat> with the EBI regarding this. So basically they highly appreciated that we approached them 
in order Them to facilitate being, this. Did you talk to Guy Cochran or who are you talking to? No, we, we, we talked to uh, Ross Abweiler. Huh? So basically, and, okay. and, so ba basically, we are on a very high level there and we, we basically um, offered that we bring this to the German community because you're absolutely right. It's, it's, and we do not want to um, basically re the, re reinvent the wheel and start new repositories, for example. Um, okay. The complete opposite. Actually, we want to look what is out there, or we know what is out there, and want to guide the community to make better use of that. So the, I, I really appreciate your, your question here. And um, absolutely agree that we basically solve things that are partially solved, not everything, but that are partially solved. But the, the, the solution that we provide is basically bringing this to the microbiological community that is often not doing this because these practices are kind of neglected. And I can say this from my, my own experience here. Maybe maybe you have different ones, but um, it's, it's pretty often uh, pretty much the, the case that these kind of things are hampering. No, I, I happen to agree. I think there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of airspace between where Guy Cochran, who's the person at EBI doing this, working for uh, directly for Wolf Abweiler, uh, is, and where usual the, the the customers are usually, and there is a translation layer missing. And what what, I, what you're tr saying is you're positioning yourself as a translation layer between EBI services, uh, and that that sounds great. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you very much. And again. Um, Please feel free to interrupt me. Thank you, Volker, for, for uh, being a good example how to do this here. Thank you. So our vision in general is that microbiologists and researchers from related fields can translate research data easily into a deep understanding of microbial species and their interaction on a molecular level. So I, I read this and now a little bit more interpretation. In principle, we would like to take the friction out of the system. Now, I mentioned this before, often people uh, generate data in one place, then carry it on a hard drive to another place, then stuff gets lost, uh, then they um, put it on one server, need to go somewhere else, need to do analysis on, on this machine and then on that machine. In the end, they want to publish this and need to upload it somewhere else. We want to take this friction out of the system and make it much, much easier for the scientific community basically to, to translate this uh, data into insights. And um, also independent of your, your background. So if you think, let's say, if you think in microbiome analysis, so a consortia of different um, species. This is something that you can do as a medical um, doctor who is doing maybe some research and has some samples that he or she would like to, to analyze. Or you can do this as somebody who's trying to study oceans. And the, the procedure is pretty much the same, but the, question, the questions that you're asking are rather different. And sometimes they are even not your, your core questions, but they are connected to what you're looking at. So also these kind of um, related fields uh, that, that I, as I mentioned here, um, would really uh, profit from this kind of approach. Our mission as NFDI for Microbiota is actually act as a central hub and support the community with access to data, analysis services, data and metadata standards, but also training, basically helping people to help themselves with these kind of things. Coming to the consortium, and uh, we are kind of active since uh, 2018. As mentioned, we work hard in the beginning of NFDI uh, for life umbrella, and we, we still are connected to that, but we extend it uh, since, since that time. So we are, have um, 10 so-called co-applicants and applicants. So basically ZB Med is the, is the applicant, but the others are so-called co-applicants. This is the official um, speak here, basically. So the vocabulary. So we are 10 of uh, applicants, co-applicants. Um, and as you can see, we have a very broad background, uh, starting from infrastructure providers to universities, um, to uh, institutions dedicated to, to this field. And with this, we have a well, a broad spectrum of um, technologies available, of capabilities, of expertises, and also a broad network inside the community. So I would say we, we are definitely part of that microbial community. Um, we also have participants and basically and unfortunately, you see this at the very bottom, we had to close the list for the time being, and that is as mostly something to do with the evaluation process. So uh, August 15th was the deadline to handle in a letter of intent uh, for the NFDI application. And um, that was basically the, the line to draw who's in and who's not. 
who's in right now, I would say, because clearly the, in, the intention is to, to use uh, the infrastructure developed here and the solutions and to roll them out to a large uh, yeah, fraction of the scientific community. Still in the beginning, we, we needed to be limited to uh, a certain set and that was basically the, the line to draw. And we have now around uh, 50 participating institutions and networks. And this includes three DFG priority programs, three DFG collaborative research centers, one cluster of excellence. And we also have the next generation sequencing competence center, which is also funded by the DFG as participants. Um, the participants, I've not written this in here, but they are coming from all larger um, societies, so we are, we are basically um, um, communities. We, we have people from universities, we have uh, Max Planck in there, we have Leibniz in there, we have Helmholtz in here, we have Fraunhofer in there, and basically a, a broad mixture um, in terms of topics. We have bacteriologists, we have people working on archaea, we have people working on viral particles, we have people working on um, parasites. We have people working on algae. So we, we have, we have, I guess, everybody in the boat to have a, I would say a little bit more than a very good test balloon and to establish these kind of um, approaches that we are thinking of. We also have uh, supporting societies. Uh, so basically um, the four, I would say large societies, VAM and uh, DHDM for, for the bacterial and, and also Achille, um uh, people, we have uh, the, um, parasite people in, involved and we have also the viral society involved. So uh, with this we also think that we have a good standing inside the inside of the community and um, importantly address what people want. It, it doesn't make sense to come come up with our solutions that uh, might be not needed by, by the different uh, researchers but in the end we, we want to establish this channel to the communities um, in, in different fashions in order to fill gaps that people see. Putting this all on a map, um, not the societies, but basically all our co-applicants um, participating uh, institutions and networks and SPPs and SFPs, uh, we, we see we are also um, on, uh, all over Germany located and I think we have a rather good standing here again. And this coming a little bit into into Volker's question, we also have uh, international partners and networks. We want to mention a few here. Uh, due to Denby, we are part of Alexia or contribute to Alexia. But clearly, one big thing on, on, on the horizon, or actually more than on the horizon, but pretty close now, is the European Open Science Cloud, EOSC. Um, you've seen we have uh, EMBL in the boat and EMBL or one outstation of EMBL is EMBL EBI and we are in, in close contact as, as Volker mentioned already, they have a lot of solutions at hand and we basically want to be the interface to the German community and they really appreciate it that we would like to go in this direction. There are other initiatives like um, from GoFair, the Fair Microbiome and other um, networks, implementation networks that we are um, interacting with and also, for example, the um, NCCR microbiomes from Switzerland contacted us already. And you see, we, we you saw the, the uh, members or basically the um, co-applicants and you know we are very well connected inside the uh, European international uh, network and that is crucial. I mentioned this already before, having, let's say, German standards doesn't make sense. It also doesn't make sense to start new repositories for, let's say, sequencing um, data. Instead, we are the, um, the local representatives and help people using this infrastructure that is out there and, and filling that gap in order to, well, make science on international level happening. And science is always something that is global and cannot be national. And that was, by the way, if I, um, I, mean, I was not involved, but at least this was a little bit reported, the F, so the national in, um, in NFDI is, was always a little bit debated because, well, research cannot happen only locally. Yeah, then we have a small slide um, that roughly um, displays the governance interactions that we, uh, that we are considering. We, and let's, let's maybe focus on the important part here. So we, uh, we um, are going to establish a scientific board that is basically represented by the societies and also by international um, partners, but also clearly we have a user council that is formed by participants in our user community. 
Um, clearly, we need to interact with the NFDI directorate, and uh, that is one thing that is, uh, was just recently established. So basically, uh, this is infrastructure that we can build upon now, and also in terms of contracts and all these kind of things. We will not basically uh, have a, uh, need, a, need a new um, association for this, so this will be all under the umbrella of the NFDI directorate uh, centrally. Clearly, we, we also will interact with other consortia. I will uh, dive into this in a, in a second. And um, clearly, we try to integrate the data generators. As mentioned, we have the, um, the four sequencing centers involved, but many of our participants have also sequencing centers or proteomic centers or other omics um, technologies um, at hand. And there we can, or this can be used as kind of a test balloon and uh, or more. To, to establish this kind of workflows and the data handling and also the teaching and, and training there. Conrad, here's yeah, a question, please. sorry. Yeah, uh, sorry, I, I seem to be the only person I asking questions. I highly appreciate that, please. <laughs> I feel really awkward. No. I owe you beer whenever we meet. No, no. Uh, so so how, does, how, does one, uh, yeah. how does one become a, a microbiota service center? Yeah. Um, in principle, those service centers are mainly meant to be, um, um, yeah, given or hosted by by the um, applicants and co-applicants but in principle there is no uh, limitation that a participant can can uh, cannot do that and we as as other as other consortia we will also ask for flex funds so flexible funds that can be allocated um, and given also to participants in order to actually give a, or provide a certain service and that that should help us also to fill gaps that we are not aware of and um, or, or not yet aware of that basically come up um, if a new technology is established or something like this and we are aiming now for five years and uh, maybe uh, even beyond that and clearly being agile and able to adapt to new needs is, is crucial and there are also other um, members of the community so basically participants could become such a service center and, and could establish a, a service as such so basically um coming back to your question if you have a good idea that is missing or have, if you see something that we have not included so far uh, please contact us and we we can see how this fits into our image there and that might be also something that is maybe not possible right now but that's something that is happening um, after a few years when we when we know that the base needs are covered and then uh, new services for example need to be established this is why we wrote here and at the bottom um, NFDR for, uh, for microbiota members and not necessarily only um, the uh, applicants, co-applicants, because in principle also participants that we see as member of, of that could contribute here. Can I okay. maybe yeah. interject? Yeah. Yes, please. Right. <clears throat> so maybe this comes later. I don't know. Maybe you could go into a bit more specifics of what we're talking about here in terms of kind of compute centers, hardware and such, yeah. because all of the dis discussions tend to happen on a somewhat higher level like mm -hmm. how can we integrate how can we analyze i think the yeah. very first um, step needs to be like how do we manage the data what's the actual physical hardware that does yeah. this yeah um i can answer this already here we have a little bit like this later on in, in the in the task areas but one core part or one core idea was and i mentioned this in, in the beginning was that the money should go into people basically and not into, I have not mentioned it there, but not into hardware. Huh? So there will be no funding for hardware as such. And this in the beginning sounds a little bit awkward, but NFDI is basically meant to be a networking um, endeavor. So it's mostly that the things that are out there should be better used and um, due to the networking of the different yeah, nodes inside of, of the community, um, the improvement should happen. Clearly, this won't be enough. And basically, the NFDI is one part of, um, of it and EOSC is the other part. So I guess there will be complementary funding happening or needed actually <clears throat> to do this. What you will see later on, um, um, I can, but I can do this here already right now. We have um, DENBY, so the German bioinformatics infrastructure here and on board and that are is for example the hardware that we'll use in the beginning and where already certain services are around maybe another question from my side yes please the the nfdi is called microbiota but mm -hmm. it looks like that it's purely sequencing mm -hmm. a bit, yeah. 
Mm, that's, that's not... uh, to, to implement other technologies like yeah. proteomics, metabolomics, yeah. culturomics, whatever yeah. in this field to really to address the question of microbiota. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And I'm not sure if I state this somewhere down there. Um, we are not limited to, se to sequencing. And I mentioned this in the beginning already. Also, other databases that, that might be of use are, are useful. And we have actually, it's a good point. I've, I'm not sure if I put this into the slides, but it's also in our, in our abstracts. Um, we are not limited to sequencing. We also have people with, with proteomics background, metabolomics, and we also have people with a biotechnological background to also put these kind of things into, into the game. And um, only focusing on sequencing would be definitely not enough. I completely agree. Also, we um, aim to interact with other consortia regarding uh, imaging data, for example. So it's, it's so much more than only sequencing. Sorry if I made this impression, but it's definitely beyond that. So thank you very much for the, for the point here. Anything else that you would like to contribute? Yeah, let me ask another question yeah, since I'm in the habit of doing that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, go for it. So, so I'm naive now, okay? I, I have a new aluminum machine. It yields four tear bases per run. Mm -hmm. Where does my hardware go? Where does my, uh, where do my fast Q files go? Mm -hmm. uh, who runs the analysis pipeline? Where does the data get stored? Those are, yeah. those are questions that almost immediately come to my mind. Yeah. Is this something that this project is about or is yeah. that, okay. Yeah, we, we aim to address that exactly. But the crucial part is actually um, that before you sequence a single base that your metadata is properly annotated and stored. This is actually the uh, one of the key things that we try to interact with the data generators and um, help them to enforce certain standards in terms of metadata that are then stored by us and also the data ideally is stored by us additionally so that they ideally... Sorry, um, can, can I ask? Can yeah, yeah, let, sure. me, let me get that. So, so, I mean, you know my background, right? You know this is what I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, that doesn't seem to be a working proposal because you're, you're basically following the model that, that the EBI is failing at and NCBI are failing at where you yeah. require metadata to be stored centrally prior to submission of sequences. And yeah. this, this model has been proven not to work over and over again. Um, yeah, because you don't have the manpower. Yeah? The, the issue is usually the case, uh, the, 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 the problem is usually, usually that the scientists themselves are not very keen on putting metadata into this. And this is where data stewards and data librarian come into the game. So basically by educating um, this, this kind of new jobs, huh, these new kind of roles that assist in the connection of metadata and consultancy of that, um, we try to overcome that issue. And also, um, one thing is also that it's local. And basically, if you are kind of, well, forced to, to, to add this metadata, then, then you have, well, higher, um, high motivation to really enter these kinds of things. But again, data quality and checking of this needs manpower. And this is exactly what we want to want to put into the into the game. Now, I'm not sure I follow, I have to admit. So, so it's, it's the plan to have decentralized curators at basically every site, because it seems to me like the reason we don't have data curators is because yeah. data curators don't scale. They don't scale, but this is why you need to invest in them. Uh, it's, it's still important. So you, you train the scientists themselves, the researchers themselves, but you additionally give a support by professional data curators, data stewards that are helping to improve that situation. Interesting. So, so uh, let me comment on this from the perspective yeah. of the international mm -hmm. metadata community, because the, the GSC has mm -hmm. basically an analyzed the same problem or mm -hmm. the same sphere. And we've come to the conclusion and I'm their executive board that the solution here is not manpower, but software. Which is one part of the whole thing, clearly, but you need also support. Okay. It's, it's, it's both sides, clearly. Um, and basically having a infrastructure that is assisting here and also holding all that information later on and also putting this into, into, um, into a discovery service and so on, that, that's all part of it that we would like to establish. But I think the software alone is, is not solving that, but it's, a, it's, it's part of the solution. Maybe I could add something to that. Yes, please, absolutely. So, we are one of those data generators. So we are one of four national sequencing centers. And uh, there are certain things that we can do that are otherwise a bit difficult to achieve. So when a customer requests a sequencing project with us, 
they would then be able to say, this is something that should go into the NFDI infrastructure. We would then be able to automatically capture a whole range of metadata that is otherwise very annoying to, pro to produce, like what sequencer, what library kits, what read length, all of that stuff. Um, what we will not be able to do, obviously, is all the biological metadata. Where was this sampled? What organism is this? Um, so there's obviously still a gap, but uh, uh, at least some parts of the metadata should be, then we're talking about software, I guess. Yeah, again, exactly. Yeah. So ideally, this falls all out of your limbs or even your electronic lab notebook. And you'll see later on that these kind of things are also addressed by us. It's also kind of changing the culture. And that was a point I made very early. Um, and the culture also means the, the whole scientific um, workflow. For example, if, if journals are requesting, you, know, you as they do now more and more, you have to put your data there, but if they are also requesting the metadata, then we have a good leverage to motivate people doing that. And I know that it's extra effort. This is why having dedicated people um, working on this is, is crucial. I don't say it's easy. I, I, I really don't say it's easy, but it's part of an approach that um, has different facets and we try to address all of those in here. Yeah. It's definitely a challenge, as it was before, if, if you just give people the raw sequencing data and then tell them, go upload it to EBI. I don't yep. think that works. And I guess that's right. also what this is kind of boiling down to. Yep. And we're sort of trying to take that away, this sort of initial barrier and saying, you sequence with us, we'll take care of the submission. And then you just have to fill out this Excel sheet, essentially. Right. Uh, and then we can track all of that as one submission and make it automatic in a sense. Exactly. And not entering it also several times, right? That you do this once and we're taking care of this metadata and, and pass it on. And once uh, the, uh, the project is in the state of a publication, this kind of stuff can be directly given then to the central infrastructure in, in, in EBI or, or even NCBI if needed. Yeah? But so the, this, by the way, this is referred to as uh, the, the metagenome registry is something we implemented with EBI a couple of years back. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bunch of basically JSON that you need to Work against. I'm still unclear as to the number of, of mm -hmm. data curators you, we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, are these basically for the, uh, you mentioned a limited number of, of data generators, or are they basically limited they, to four, they, or is there a larger number? Yeah, no, it's it's not a large number so far, but this should be also compensated by training. It's a, it's a basically um, central organized and not unfortunately not each sequencing center will have uh, somebody available like this this is unfortunately um, not possible in, in this funding scheme if you if you if you boil it down what what needs to be done there um, but again hopefully the um, th this can be extended so we see this more as a, as a starting point to showcase all of that and then in terms of other funding getting more human power into the boat But I really like the discussion, so I'm very happy for 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 further questions. And that's also crucial, right, for us to 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 get your feedback. And um, uh, and as I said, it won't be easy, and it won't happen, you know, uh, just by pushing a button. It will be a long and dry path. I, I'm 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 rather sure. But I think it's worth walking this. And if you have experience with this, we're very happy to to um, yeah build upon those. Okay, then I would say I would continue here. There is the so-called uh, Leipzig Berlin Declaration for cross-cutting topics that uh, is part of, let's say, the NFDI community in general, and we also signed that. So we are also very happy to uh, work together on these topics and um, share our opinions and also put even some energy into, into this and working on this together. Uh, more importantly, we have, uh, yeah, bi-directional agreements with different consortia on very different topics uh, where we would like to work together and uh, yeah, have, have a heavy exchange in different uh, fields um, that can be based on standards, but that can be also technical infrastructure. And uh, several of our um, co-applicants are also members of different consortia, so it makes also sense to, to use uh, the, yeah, common, common infrastructure and basically leverage here the, the synergies. And um, clearly we are still open for, for further interactions with other and maybe upcoming uh, NFDI consortia. And if, if, you, if you think back, uh, microbiota are basically found everywhere. So it's, it's, it is crucial also on a, on a um, scientific level to interact on, um, 
on these kind of things together. All right. So the, the planned work, uh, work program in, in a rough overview consists of these uh, five task areas, um, plus we have something which is called the use cases, um, which are basically connecting all these kind of things. And I would like to go slowly with you through the different um, measures that we have. Let's face it, the most interesting one is number four. Um, still, the other ones are of relevance, but number four are the, well, number one and number four are the ones that are uh, yeah, closest to, to the people and, and are the actual things for the, the research community. So let's start clearly, we need to do outreach and in order to make people aware of this and, and by that avoid uh, kind of uh, double work and also, yeah, get input by, by other people who have already experienced this. The connection to other NFDI consortia, as mentioned, is, is strongly ongoing, and uh, that's also uh, very important to avoid um, reinventing the wheel several times. And also the connection to international partners, as mentioned before, is crucial in order to uh, have a international solution of the, in terms of technologies, but also standards, and maybe also, not actually maybe, but also on the level of training. Clearly, we need to do also some public relations. That's very common. But we also need to communicate into, uh, into politics what we need. And that is something that we actually saw a lot uh, also in the recent month in terms of, of COVID, because um, the, there were different fund, or well, there was different funding happening. Um, interestingly, very little on on the omics um, level and um, on high throughput uh, data. But I think if we if we can establish a, a link to there, we can also make them better understand how research is happening today and what kind of things are required. And last and definitely not least is training, education and support. This is actually very crucial and this is maybe one thing that we can and start very early because in the end um, we need to invest basically in minds as, as it was actually demanded and having a deep understanding of the problems that high throughput technologies bring and what kind of requirements are there and what is actually today good scientific practice is crucial. We have in the consortium several people who are very strong in, in the training aspect and we would like to use this network to bring this to many more people um, interested in basic data, data analysis but also good um, data management and um, everything in, 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 in this direction. Standards and policies, we mentioned this already before, it's, it's crucial to, to work on that. There are often already standards out there, but it's also very important to uh, look around um, how this can be brought to the people in the end and how to kind of enforce it. Um, I wouldn't say force people to use it, but to enforce uh, the, the, um, the implementation of those in the different systems and by that removing a lot of friction to and, and make movement of, of data and metadata easy. And by that also improving this whole work process of scientists. We mentioned this again also before. Um, if ideally you enter your metadata once or ideally the metadata is actually recorded by the machines and then uh, given um, downstream and uh, Building on these standards is, is basically crucial and sometimes, unfortunately, there are no standards and they first have to be developed and that, that would be also part. Similar thing is also even before the actual recording happens, uh, SOPs for experimental procedures and how they can be recorded would be also one thing that we would work on. Standards of workflows and tools, there are things like um, CWL, so common um, workflow language and so on, that are things that we would like to um, support and extend and also implement in our um, structure. Also the development of policies for data management and publication sharing. I mentioned this, that is kind of important to um, make clear that a publication should not, not look like how, uh, like it looks, looked, uh, let's say decades ago, but that today uh, publications must be much more transparent and we luckily have the, the means for doing this. So there should be the data available, there should be code available, there should be also provenance of the data described. It should be pretty clear how we came from the original um, experiment to the measurement to the insights that were generated. And that should be all part of publication and that should be shared 
and um, also here we see as as a as a gap into into the microbial community we uh, we come from let's say a very strong open access and open science uh, background we all were fighting for fair data since since many years already and basically here we want to be the translator for these kind of um, concepts and policies into the community and clearly policies and legal issues are here also uh, important uh, regarding licenses also here often a lot of um, training is also needed and people are not aware what kind of licenses they should use can use um, in order to make sharing of data um, possible and what kind of data they can actually reuse again okay then the Technical infrastructure, as said, this is maybe something people are not so much interfacing with directly, but still it's super important. So uh, the computational infrastructure operations itself, uh, as mentioned, we are heavily building on, on Denby, which is, uh, in my opinion, a very successful and, and um, unique yeah, network uh, that is the foundation not only for us, but also for other NFDIs. And that's uh, yeah, a great, uh, great foundation for the work here. Um, we will also need to uh, go further into data storage services, including management and access control, as basic data will not be directly publicly available after sequencing, but people would like to first do their studies and once they are done with their project would like to publish this. Um, clearly, we need kind of access control to data. Um, we will also need to develop new software and tools and also common components, ideally shared with other NFDIs, but clearly there will be also uh, tools that are dedicated for the analysis of, let's say, microbial data or omics data in, in general. Um, but also here we um, might need to invest in, in certain solutions. Clearly also service monitoring, uh, service monitoring and reporting will be also uh, relevant to, to, um, to see what is happening on, on the hardware and also to distribute these kind of things. And um, maybe also generating software repositories for uh, sharing these kind of components. And maybe a real CI CD infrastructure so that these kind of things are automatically distributed to the productive machines after testing and so on. Uh, but now the I would say the, the core piece after after the um, after number one. Um, so in the end, we would like to have a central hub inclusive re research and discovery services where people can start with. Um, analytical services can be hosted there, and um, again, as as part of an international network, uh, mostly a European network. We also would like to host uh, databases and transfer databases that may be existing already, but that are not maintained. Um, we will run terminology services that to, to translate also metadata into, um, yeah, between metadata. Uh, ideally, we can do uh, data quality and provenance services or can run those in order to uh, take care of uh, good quality and, and check these kind of things and most importantly also the, the provenance that we see the different steps uh, data uh, under, underwent in order to, to uh, get to an insight. The final data deposition and repositories, as mentioned, we will not run or very unlikely run new repositories. Um, there are some of those established already and we would like to help getting the data into those um, with the data that we have already. And also long-term preservation is something that we would aim for, especially for metadata that doesn't have um, repositories so far, um, we would work on. Also, that was a wish uh, kind of the, com from the community. It's also, th this goes a little bit into data quality and provenance and reviewing and recommending system for data that we know what is actually good data and maybe even purely getting credits for having a very good data set. And that's uh, also very motivating and is increasing the standards for data in general. Often people are not handling a single um, type of, of data, but also would like to, for example, do genomics, uh, put transcriptomics on top, uh, would like to correlate this, this with proteomics and maybe put some metabolomics on top of this. And also this should be addressed and uh, should end up in, in modeling that gives kind of a systems perspective on, on um, bacteria and other microbial species. Another topic that we see exploding basically in, in all research fields, um, at least in the life sciences, I have to say, are electronic lab notebooks. And 
also mentioned before, I'm seeing this a lot, I'm, I'm making a lot of connections to previous things. Um, electronic, lab, lab, uh, electronic lab notebooks are kind of a key component where these kind of things can be recorded and then given further downstream. And the important part is again, that we have here open standards that help to share this and make it possible to pass it downstream. And we have also in, inside of the consortium already a lot of experience with these kind of tools and uh, can recommend uh, their tools and maybe also run own ones, but that all needs to be discussed. So as mentioned, this is the core part. I would say the other part, I sometimes say is the, the, the dry part. Clearly we need project governance, we need project financial controlling, we need reporting. And most importantly, um, we also need dynamic adaptation and scalability. It's pretty clear that the ideas that we have right now and that we are writing down on a proposal that this will facing reality at some point and needs to be adapted and changed. And this is also why we have these or intend to have these flexible funds in there to, well, yeah, it, it, be able to, to, to work with the world uh, out there in, in a few years. Um, then finally, we have use cases here, a few examples. We have more, but we are all always happy to um, to extend this and we will work with the participants also to, to, to get more of those actually written down. Um, for example, antibiotic resistance uh, screening, uh, sorry, antibiotic screening, bioreactoronics, uh, benchmarking of frameworks, uh, clinical viral genomics, clinical, uh, I, I think I don't read all of those down here. The, the main aim is actually to have uh, concrete cases where we connect our participants um, to and also connect it to the measures that we would like to implement. So basically having a um, cross-cutting uh, network um, of, of measures where, where we can connect measures and, and activities and um, the participants and other players in the game. And that is also one thing where we are very happy if, if people see use cases they would like to, like to go through with us um, that they can be added here. Okay, with this, we are already coming to the end and the hour, the first hour is already uh, close to be uh, over. And that would be also the part where you get into the play. And again, thank you so much for, for your time already now and also for the comments of Volker. You, you, I think I own you a beer, I would say. Um, and the, the way you can contribute now already is if you, if you interested in joining later. As mentioned, unfortunately, due to the evaluation process, we, we are um, closed, at least for the time being, but I'm rather sure that we will very soon add more people again, and you can contact us if you like to join. You can suggest use cases, especially for participants. This is still the way to contribute, and we will anyway uh, get closer to this again. Uh, you can give feedback in any way, and we have once or we have several structured ways of doing this uh, now. And we have already a round, or we had already a round of a questionnaire that was sending around, and we will start a new round now again um, for, oh, I don't have the date precisely at hand until. Justine, maybe you can help me. I think 11th of yes. September we, we said, right? Exactly. Thank you very much. So we will share the link here again and we will also spread it um, over Twitter and our website again. So if you, if you want to give feedback here uh, via the question, a detailed feedback uh, that is possible. What we will do now is, um, well, we have structured this in, in different ways, but maybe we, we can also have a discussion here right now again, but we will have the following um, option for you right now. We will have basically a small poll. So whoever is very uh, short on time, we still would love to get your very minimal feedback. Uh, Justine will start a poll in, in, a, in a few seconds once I'm done here, where you can basically rank our or give feedback uh, re regarding our task areas from one poor to five strong. We also have a pet, so basically a collaborative um, working document where you can basically simply write what was good, what was bad, and you can pick whatever you want. You can write this to one of the task areas, to any, you can add a, a use case. Um, and additionally, would like to start a discussion with you. I can make one in the bigger round, but I would rather quickly move then to breakout rooms. The breakout rooms are 
um, smaller rooms where a smaller group of people can discuss. We, we know that not everybody is comfortable speaking in, in, in larger groups. And while we had already some people speaking here intensively, we are rather sure that other voices also should be heard. And this is why we would like to offer these breakout rooms where an always one or two of NFTI for MicroVota members uh, are located and, and are very happy to, to yeah, get your suggestions. All right, with this, um, I would like to thank you so much for your time. Uh, I hope we could answer already a lot of questions that were in your head before, but again, uh, the breakout rooms are also there for, for, asking, uh, for, for answering your questions, but also give your, your, your feedback. We also have to thank FDM NRW for the support. This is always um, great to, uh, because they can uh, yeah, organize a lot of things here and that was very helpful for us. Please join us on Twitter. Uh, we have information on the website. Also the questionnaire, whoever has to leave now, the question the questionnaire will be also linked on our website again. And with this, I would say I stop here. And again, thank you very much.